The outfield. Okay, the outfield. Um, as far as at least fantasy goes, you can have three outfielders in any position. So odds are you're gonna have, you know, a decent outfielder, at least one, uh, if not two, if not three. So um, the outfield is probably a position that you're gonna have uh pretty well filled out. But in the event that I know that some people would rather go get players in the infield, which typically are thinner in um you know production uh because they're limited to their position so you have to get you know the best of the best of those positions um you might be looking for an outfield sleeper and uh so i got five of them for you and uh, i know i'm gonna make a couple of you scratch scratch your heads on this one um i know a couple of you're gonna ask oh uh, you know what the hell am i thinking but um you know i i see these guys having a big year um well let me rephrase as far as sleepers go uh better than expected should I say. And uh, the first one is another Cincinnati Red. It is uh, Ryan Ludwig. And um, this guy, uh, again, you probably didn't hear, didn't know that he had a pretty solid year with the Reds. He hit 275 and hit 26 home runs. Uh, 80 RBIs doesn't hurt either. So uh, this guy, um, definitely, he's not in the, you know, upper elite echelon of outfielders, but uh, he's, you know, the pretty good. Um, I look for this guy to have even a, a bigger season he's playing a great American ballpark. And uh, like I said earlier, the NL Central pitching isn't the best. And uh, this guy seems to hit the ball well. He's got a great um, lineup to hit in. So uh, he'll probably get plenty of pitches to see. So uh, look for this guy, our first outfielder. If you uh, need a sleeper pick, you need a pick, you know, in those, those last few picks of your uh, fantasy draft, this guy won't disappoint. All right, now here's where I uh, I could potentially be turning some heads here. I'll get some people to say, uh, you know, what the hell are you thinking? I uh, get some head scratches here. But uh, my next pick is going to be Jeff Francoeur of the Kansas City Royals, uh, the guy who is so ironically was named the natural so many years ago, um, who was kind of just uh, mocked. Um, I remember uh, in the what was it? I think the year it was 2010. Um, the ALCS, uh, the Yankees and the Rangers, and just before this uh, happened, uh, I was watching a video of uh, a batting stance guy, and uh, he was doing Jeff Francoeur's swing because uh, he was on the, he got traded to the Rangers that year. So he was uh, doing Jeff Francoeur's swing, and as he's coming through, he says, oh, he's going uh, to swing at everything. And uh, that's that's uh, no surprise. Everybody knows Jeff Francoeur is a free swinger at the plate. But that's not always a bad thing. You look at guys like Vladimir Guerrero, who literally have hit pitches that bounce in the dirt. So and it's not necessarily a bad guy. It just depends on if he's making contact or not. Um, if you look over the span of his career, I mean, he is a 266 hitter. He's not as bad as everybody makes him out to be. Uh, and so that's that's not terrible. And w primarily, what I'm doing with this pick is I'm looking to see. Uh, during 2011, a uh, year which he almost made the All-Star team, you look at him, he batted 285 that year, hit 20 home runs, 87 RBIs uh, on, on the Royals. So, you know, he also uh, walked 37 times, I think it's worth noting. So he wasn't, you know, wasn't setting records with strikeouts like he usually does. Uh, that was a pretty good year for him, in fact. And uh, last year, yeah, it was, it was kind of a downer. Uh, he only hit 235. Struck out 119 times. Still did hit 16 home runs, which isn't bad at all. So we'll have to, what I'm doing here is I'm playing the pattern to say, okay, he had a good year, had an off year. Now here comes another good year. So as crazy as it sounds, uh, I, I'm having faith. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, probably won't, but don't be surprised. This is the Royals team that is matured now. Um, they got some nice hitters to go off. Uh, with that young talent, so they got a lineup in which you'll be seeing some pitches, and uh, now that Will Myers has been traded, there's no really pressure for his job. He'll have a starting job, so the pressure's off, and some guys just play best when the pressure is off, so I'll uh, look for this guy to have a big year. Alright, Cole Rasmus is our next uh, fantasy outfield sleeper pick, and uh, this might be another head scratcher, uh, because the guy batted 223 last year. And uh, that's got awful. That's actually worse than Jeff Francoeur. So uh, where do we go from there? Um, he did hit 23 home runs. So Rossmith is a guy who I feel like uh, you know I've been big on him for a few years. I especially liked him with the Cardinals. Um, 
feel like he's never really lived up to his true potential. I think that he's got the tools to, um, he could be, you know, a four or five to a player. He just got to put it all together. And I think a lot of his, um, his woes last year were due to the fact that Jose Bautista was hurt. Um, I don't have these stats off the top of my head. I will definitely try and post them in the description. But there was like a split or something that he hit so much better when Jose Bautista was in the lineup because he's because he was getting pitches to hit. Um, you know, you'd rather pitch around Jose Bautista and pitch to the guy in front of him. So you know, I, I assuming Bautista, you know, in the whole Toronto Blue Jays uh, team is just a, a whole different story for me. I think that if they're healthy, they'll be fine. Um, but their team has trouble being healthy. I mean, let's be honest, uh, last year the Marlins were supposed to be pretty good, huh? And they weren't. And now the Marlins are pretty much in Miami, or Marlins are pretty much in Toronto now. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. But assuming those guys stay healthy uh, and Rosmus gets protection, look for this guy to have, definitely have a strong bounce back year. Um, he's playing for a spot. Uh, and some, Like I said, some guys uh, don't necessarily respond to pressure that well. And some guys do, and uh, it's a do-or-die year, so we'll see what happens for them. And our fourth uh, sleeper pick is Alejandro Deaza of the Chicago White Sox. And uh, talk about coming out of no uh, nowhere. Uh, he hit 281. Uh, he had uh, 81 runs scored, uh, 9 home runs, 50 RBIs, uh, 26 bases stolen. So... This guy doesn't necessarily excel in any one area, but he's, you know, good in all of them. Um, he can drive the ball, he can uh, get on base, he can take a base. Uh, well, I guess that works both ways. He can walk, he's walked 47 times, and he can swipe a bag. So uh, this guy is definitely a solid pick for your outfield. He's kind of you. he doesn't abide or doesn't uh, limit himself to any one category. He can do it all, so... Uh, this guy, I, I have a hard time even putting him on the sleepers list because he looks like he's such a proven commodity. He's almost a steal. Uh, I might, I, I had a hard time putting him on this, this list as opposed to the steal list. But uh, this guy is definitely, uh, if he can keep up his production like he did last year, uh, definitely a good pick. And last and potentially least is uh, Ben Revere. This is the only guy that, I mean, I have a whole thing. All my picks, he's definitely the guy that I go, eh, not so sure about. But um, I put him on here anyways. Um, uh, the guy um, played 124 games, so he, he stayed healthy for most of the year. Uh, hit 294, that's pretty good. Um, and he stole 40 bases, so he's definitely a uh, let's uh, you know slap hit, get on base kind of guy. The only concern here is that he just doesn't seem to have the ability to drive the ball whatsoever and the fact that he hit no home runs and only had 13 doubles. So this guy is definitely a pure, uh, you know, contact base dealer. He's not going to get you those high numbers that, you know, a base clearing double or a home run would get you. So this guy is kind of a guy that uh, really if you don't have an out, if you have a strong outfield spot or strong outfield, I should say, uh, you need a spot to fill out. This guy, he'll get you through, I think, that those stolen bases um, should make up for it. And uh, I think he slots in the Philadelphia's lineup nicely, so we'll see what happens.